thank you and welcome to this session on um, understanding PX grid dynamic uh, PX grid dynamic topics. Uh, this is a second session in sequence of um, a session we had a couple of days ago where we introduced PX grid. Um, show of hands, how many of you folks here attended that session? All right, perfect. Um, how many of you folks are familiar with Cisco ICE and have deployed PX grid in any shape or form? Okay, so what I'll do is I'll quickly go through uh, a brief introduction to covering PX grid at a high level and then dive into why we created dynamic topics and we'll talk about how you can leverage dynamic topics for a better telemetry sharing, etc. So again, the, the whole concept of why we develop PX grid is um, uh, there is a problem we are trying to solve with, in, uh, with, the, uh, with the SOC analyst when he's trying to respond to a security event. We, the SOC analyst needs to kind of identify you know, where, the, where a breach or an event occurred. They need to kind of associate who the user was associated with that breach. Uh, that means they would want to know, you know, what's the IP address, but not only that, but any more telemetry around that device. They also want to know what kind of authorization levels that person was uh, associated with so that they could better fine tune access policies for the future. Maybe you want to find out, you know, was that device postured? Did it have the right antivirus? Did it have, uh, uh, you know, the current agent running? And then they want to know whether this person is still live on the network. Is he still capable of doing more, creating more harm? Uh, you need to identify what kind of device it is. Is it something that's mobile that can be tracked or is something that's fixed? And then the important question is, after I find out all that, how do I take the next step of mitigating that event? So in the old days, the SOC operator would need to look through a variety of systems to get all that information. He would need to go to the IAM vendor to find out you know, uh, what was the authorization levels, to maybe info blocks to find out what was the IP address associated, uh, look at his endpoint to see whether it was patched, and where is it live on the network. So with Cisco ICE, as you folks know, it's, the, it's, our, it's our next gen radio server. At heart, it does the authentications. We do profiling, we do posture assessment. We understand you know, who's the user, what's his IP address, what's his MAC address associated, uh, what's the NAD port, switch port that he's connected to, or which WLC is closest to him. Um, we also, because we, we share telemetry from systems like Cisco MSC, we can give you the location of where the user is. Uh, maybe we connect to an MDM vendor so we can tell you whether the user has a Samsung tablet that is root, rooted. So that's, that is more of a problem. So what we do is we share this information to our partners, like SOC operators, that they can collate that and not only understand uh, a correlation, but allow them to take an action back on the network. So we do this using PX Grid. Uh, so, so with PX Grid, what we do is we provide that context. So what it means is that we put the who, what device, what access. It's just better than just IP addresses. The other reason why we have an ecosystem with PX Grid is that we can learn from our other partners because, say, a product, product may have specialty in that area like say a user behavior analytics product. They understand user behavior so that they can tell ICE something is wrong and we can use that information to fine tune your access policy. Uh, take for example, we are talking to companies like badge reading software. So think about, you know, you enter a building, if you're in a particular location, you are provisioned with a different access control policy. So it becomes very powerful. Also, the, U, the third thing that we do that is very unique to Cisco and the ICE integration is that we allow our partners to use ICE to do its day job of telling ICE to do the radius change of authorization, to change a VLAN, push a dynamic ACL, or as a trust check enforcer to change a security group tag. So what happens is that using this uh, integrations, you can quickly respond to a security event or a network event and you can reduce the time to take an action, which is very important in, a, in the security frame of mind. Make sense? 
So what is PX Grid? When we first started with ICE, we, we exposed all our information via syslog. We are a radio server, so we have syslog. Vendors like ArcSight, uh, 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 QRadar, IBM, and um, Splunks of the world took that and used that to correlate data. Again, it is, it is a, it's like a fire hose of information, and uh, they, took that and they took that information, but they still had to do an analysis of what granularity it was. Then we had partners, uh, customers asking us to integrate with MDM vendors. So we created an API for our MDM partners, like the mobile irons, the air watchers of the world, to integrate MDM so that we could check posture compliance on mobile devices. At that time, we took a step back and said, you know, all our customers were asking us to integrate various other technologies. How can we do this in a, in a scalable manner? Because think about it, if you have, if in your environment you have five or six products that need to talk to each other, writing APIs is going to increase polling on those systems to ask for information, and it's going to be a nightmare to manage. So we st stepped back, and um, my distinguished colleague here came up with this technology called Platform Exchange Grid, or PX Grid for short. So think of PX Grid as a messaging fabric or a messaging bus so that our partners can integrate into. Uh, so, like, just as you have a bus on a motherboard, think of uh, PX Grid as a bus that our partners, we gave them a client called the Grid Client Library. And they took that client, the SDK client, and they compiled that in their product. So all the 50 partners we have today have taken that client and compiled that in their product so that they can get ac access to the grid. The, the, the PX Grid is basically based under the uh, underlying technologies XMPP. Um, show of hands, people know XMPP and have you used it before? So if you folks use Cisco Jabber, Cisco Collaboration Software, that's the underlying protocol that's been used. So it can scale, uh, scale to m multiple thousands of subscribers, and it is a pub-sub, so it's not only one way, you can publish and you can subscribe. And the communication can be bi-directional. So in this way, you can set up a grid where a customer's ICE deployment can have multiple other products connecting, consuming stuff from ICE, but also publishing to the grid. And the way we publish to the grid is what is called dynamic topics, and that's what we're going to talk about in depth in a few. So in this way, we build up the grid, and uh, we have a system that can be more scalable, and it helps with security because the environment is secure. It's not that I can create an application and then just connect to a customer's ICE deployment. The ICE administrator needs to approve the, in, the connection that comes on board. There is certificate-based authentication or PSK authentication. And, and there is encryption. The last thing is, it is very, we are seeing a lot of partners adopting ICE integration because of ANC. So when they get PX Grid, they get a way of signaling ICE to take that quarantine action, or you can do an investigative action. We can take a, we can do a port bounce, and here's one thing that's uh, that we found that customers are using is that since ICE is the controller that not only supports Cisco devices and also third party, you can in in, in effect do a port bounce on a non on a non Cisco switch if that's supported by ICE for example. So in a hybrid Cisco and non-Cisco environment, you can still leverage the benefit of PX Grid integrations. So just a quick uh, glance, we have around 50 partners, to, uh, 50 partner product integrations as of today. I, I run BizDev and I've got a, a pipeline of 15 more vendors that are going to be joining in as well. What we've also done is we have taken this to an open, we're trying to get this as a standard. So it is in two working groups in the IETF in the SACM working group and the MILE working group. We are also making uh, this available for customers like you to use. So if you have a homegrown application, for example, uh, we had a customer that had an inventory control system that was uh, homegrown. They took our SDK and they were able to connect to ICE to get more enriched data. So we do that by, uh, all you need to do is to go to our, our, our website on DevNet, and you can download our SDK libraries, you can download ICE, you get tutorials, you get videos on how to develop, and it is free to join. So you can then use that in your home application. 
So, so kind of summary of the use cases, we have IAM vendors like uh, Ping Identity Secure Auth, vulnerability assessment partners like Tenable Nessus, Saint, Rapid7, to IoT security devices like Bayshore. And so as you can see from this list, we've got a lot more different technologies that are trying to integrate with us. We also integrate with some, uh, some, uh, some uh, competitors that you know, it may be in one space, but for the general benefit of our customers, they want to see that integration. So we integrate with uh, vendors like Infoblox and, and Checkpoint. Uh, so with that, I will hand over the operational details and we'll talk more about what dynamic topics are and how you all can use that grid. Sham? So as uh, Brian mentioned, uh, PX Grid is a messaging framework that allows uh, you know, information to be pushed in real time to various subscribers that are participating in PX Grid. In the absence of a push notification framework like a messaging protocol, the existing mechanisms available are syslog and REST API. Using REST APIs, partnering up applications like QRadar or the 50 other partners that Brian mentioned, have to constantly pull over REST API to get the information. That's a very expensive operation. So PXGrid is a messaging framework that provides uh, flexible APIs to consume information. It can be a real-time uh, real event notification, it can be a directed peer-to-peer -peer query, or it could be a bulk, bulk transfer of information out of band. So how do we do this securely is what PXGrid uh, is pursuing, basically. So PXGrid service, messaging service, is a service instantiated in uh, identity services engine. Administrator goes to ICE and enables the service on one of the appliances. Okay? And uh, once the service is enabled, there's a, the PXGrid server gets instantiated, and the PX grid server has two pieces. It has a controller piece, and it has a data plane piece, data server piece. For data server, as Brian mentioned, we have been using XMPP mess mess messaging mechanism. XMPP is an instant message protocol. It, it offers various things like federation support, complete security. It can detect the presence of participants in the PX grid uh, fa fabric. It can support domain segregation. We have seen uh, XMPP scale to 8 million endpoints with WebEx offering at Cisco. That's one of the reasons why we chose XMPP. So there's a PX grid controller aspect, which takes care of uh, authenticating any, use, any client connecting in and authorizing the client to determine what information it can consume or what information it cannot sort of a thing. And the PX grid controller for a subscriber connecting in and that is authenticated and authorized, it, uh, it places the subscriber in the right uh, subscription list within the XMPP topics, and then it gets out of the way. So to manage all of this PX grid, we use ICE today because it's an ICE offering as a system manager to determine, to approve the client approval accounts, to enable topics, disable topics, to specify the client authorizations, to enroll subscription to a given topic sort of a thing. And, and to collect logs, to troubleshoot, to instantiate service, we use ICE as a system manager. So what we have here is a PX grid controller that supports a certificate-based or appreciate key-based authentication mechanisms with the subscribers connecting in. And ICE is a system manager. And for the first version of PX grid that we put it into the market, these are the initial set of topics we support. We call it topic. Topic is nothing but imagine an information channel. You know, session information is one, uh, one, uh, one topic. Device profiling could be another topic. Threat information could be another topic. Within the topic, you have publishers, you have subscribers. For the first generation of PX Grid, we have ICE as a publisher for the topics mentioned on the left-hand side. <coughs> so the topics we support in ICE to prior to 2.0 are these are the various topics we support. ICE is a AAA server, as all of you know. It authenticates and onboards users and devices coming onto the network. By virtue of it being a radius server, it has a real-time uh, purview on what the active sessions are there in the network. It can say brand belonging to engineering, using an iPhone at this part of the network. We call, this, we call it as contextual intelligence. We share it on the session directly topic to all the participants. Uh, entities like security event management systems, so on and so forth, are interested in consuming that information because they can get the complete situational awareness. Likewise, the identity groups for an authenticated user, 
the Active Directory Identity Groups, we publish it via Identity Tropic. TrustSec, you, may, you guys must have heard about TrustSec. It is a security group tax and association to an IP address sort of a thing. We publish it via the TrustSec metadata topic. Endpoint protection service and adaptive network control is an ability for a third party system to quarantine or unquarantine a particular user or change the network privilege dynamically. Assuming a, a Landcorp stealth watch has detected an anomalous endpoint that is uh, exhibiting suspicious behaviors, by subscribing to an ANC or an EPS topic, it can go tell ICE to do a change of authorization that can result in a new network segment being offered to the customers or to, to the endpoint. Likewise, for a device, end, uh, device profiling, we, we send it over, over uh, endpoint uh, profile metadata topic. And the core service, any PX grid client connecting to PX grid uh, uh, network, when it authenticates and authorizes successfully, it automatically subscribes to a core topic. On the core topic, it can discover all the topics running in the network, who the publishers are, so on and so forth. So what I'm going to walk through is a couple of screenshots on what we do in, uh, in ICE. Uh, we, talk, we talked about this. ICE is a PX grid uh, system manager and a controller. And uh, uh, ICE, the PX grid controller's responsibility is to authenticate, authorize, uh, uh, manage the topics, manage client accounts sort of a thing. And uh, the primary administration node of ICE is used as a PX grid system manager. For the topics we, we discussed in the previous slide, ICE policy administration node and monitoring, monitoring and troubleshooting node are the publishers of session data, device profiling, trust sec, adaptive network control sort of topics. What you see here are the various topics and publishers to the topics. The way it typically works, right, the client connects to the px network using a certificate or appreciate key mechanism. The controller gets the request and says, I don't know this client. It, it relays the client subscription request or the account, account because the, the account doesn't exist to the ICE policy administration node. The administrator sees a request pending, account approval request pending. He goes to one of these screens and, uh, and clicks on approval. You can see the approve button here clicks on the approval. Then the client account is approved, and the authentication is successful. And the client selects that particular kind, client and says he belongs to this particular authorization group. And within the, the, we have authorizations around the topics that are running on PX grid. If the, if the, if the uh, PX grid client has the right level of authorization, it can participate either as a publisher or as a subscriber to those topics. OK, that is the rigor. Once, once the authorizations are successful and authentication is successful, client discovers the topic and sends a subscription request. And the controller gets the subscription request and looks at the authorization table to see if the client is allowed to be a subscriber to a given topic. If the client is allowed, it goes ahead and, and enrolls the subscriber as a subscriber to a particular topic already existing on the network. So the, for all this, we use ICE uh, policy administration node to do the account approvals, enabling topics, disabling topics, creating the authorization profile, so on and so forth. What we see on the screen here is a PX grid client authenticating with ICE using a self-signed or a CA-signed certificate or appreciate key mechanism. It can subscribe, it can publish, it can do directed queries, or it can, it can uh, do bulk, bulk download. All, all message exchanges happening on PX grid is secured uh, over SSL, SSL or TLS uh, connection. We talked about the, the client subscribes to one of the topics on the list. So these are the various authorizations that PX Grid supports in the ICE 2.0 version. A client connecting into the PX Grid network by default gets a basic authorization, which means it can just authenticate and nothing else kind of a thing. The administrator can select a particular client account and say this particular client can be part of ANC topic, session topic, and EPS topic. Which means when it sends a subscription request to either of these topics, let's say a session topic, the controller knows, yes, this authorization is allowed and enrolls the subscriber sort of thing. So we support uh, uh, you know, session, ANC, EPS for the subscribers. For the administration purpose, there is an administrator authorization policy, uh, you know, uh, policy where only the PAN, which is a system manager, is part of the administration authorization profile group. We'll talk about dynamic topics in a minute. The typical behavior of PX grid, right, is an analogous to file transfer protocol. 
There is a control plane phase, there is a data plane phase. When the clients connect in the control plane phase for the first time, they authenticate and authorize only with the PX grid controller. Once it goes past the authorization phase and client creates a subscription, a subscription list for a given topic, the controller gets out of the way and the information is put right inside the data plane server, in this case, the XMPP server. That's when a, when a message, when a publisher publishes the message, XMPP server gets the message and looks at the subscription list. If there are subscriber X, Y, and Z, it makes three copies and gives the message to each of the subscribers, basically. So what this slide talks about is the, uh, the publisher authenticates with the controller, okay, and the subscriber authenticates with the controller as well. And the publisher is authorized to be a publisher to a given topic and the publisher is added by the PX Grid controller to the XMPP server as a publisher, likewise for the subscriber. And once the subscription list is created, the publisher publishes the message directly to the XMPP server. Please notice the controller is not involved in this transaction. And the subscriber gets the message. Likewise, when a subscriber wants to make a directed query, you may, you may ask, why do you need those so many queries? Imagine a firewall that wants to do identity-based firewalling. If all it knows is without, without ICE and PX grid in picture, it only knows the IP addresses of the traffic coming to the box. For it to do identity-based monitoring, it, it, it requires uh, it to participate in a PX grid network as a PX grid client, and it gets real-time notification as and when users authenticate at the access layer. Okay, so they get the real-time notifications because of network congestion or power, power outage sort of scenarios. It may miss out some notification. For a, for, a, for, the, for a user session or user uh, information that it doesn't know about a particular IP address, it can go query I saying, hey, for this particular IP address, can you, give me more, can you give me the information? Or it may say, I lost out completely in this time window. Can you give me a bulk update of all the sessions you know between the, these two particular timestamps kind of a thing? So this messaging framework facilitates all these, all these kind of transactions. In some cases, we also do filtering. It's again a publisher predicate. A publisher publishing the messages may say that I can support a subnet-based filter or a location-based filter. Good example for that is a firewall running in a branch network. It may not be interested in knowing all the corporate events. All it cares to know is the events or session events happening pertaining to that particular branch network only, specified as IP, uh, specified as IP subnets, let's say 1.1.0 .1 or a 2.2.0 kind of a sort of thing. As part of subscribing to the session topic, it can say, I'm only interested in these subnets and nothing else. It is the publisher responsibility to filter the messages and hand, hand over those subnet-specific messages to the branch firewall. All right. What we did in 2.0, prior to 2.0, we only supported ICE as a publisher. In 2.0, we created a concept called dynamic topics. By dynamic topics, we mean ICE can still serve as a system manager for PX Grid, but ICE doesn't have to be the publisher alone. Anyone can programmatically create new topics on a PX Grid network. A good example is, uh, if we, we talk about it in, a, in, in, a, in the subsequent slides, info blocks or open DNS, for example, detects some bad hosts. Based on the DNS queries being made, it can detect some suspicious or a bad host sort of a thing. Imagine OpenDNS being, uh, you know, creating a topic called bad hosts on the network and publishes the list of the bad, you know, so anomalous endpoints or bad, bad host IP addresses. And imagine a Qualys vulnerability assessment system receiving the bad host information. And on demand, it can create a vulnerability scan on the set of bad hosts. And it can do the vulnerability scan, get the results, and make sure the endpoints either are good or bad. In a good case, it can go update the open DNS head. These, uh, these bad hosts X, Y, and Z, X is clean and Y and Z are not clean sort of a thing. That allows open DNS to take X off the list. For Y and Z, there is an opportunity for uh, a vulnerability scanner like Qualys to go quarantine the user by subscribing to the ANC or EPS topic. So the use case we talked about here is, uh, the, the good way to put it, is seller has some information, has some uh, items or products to sell, and he's entertaining bids on those products. Bidders wants to know what the products are, and they want to do real-time bidding. 
and you have watch, uh, watchers which wants to watch the proceedings. They want to know the inventory, they want to know the bit status sort of a thing. How can we accomplish that on a PX grid network is what we're going to talk about. So the publisher, in this case, uh, let's say eBay, wants to cre create an uh, you know, auction topic, proposes an auction topic, and the topic uh, needs to, goes to the PX grid controller and the ICE system manager, and uh, the administrator approves the topic. The moment the topic is approved, it gets uh, uh, discovered on the PX grid network. And in this case, the sellers, uh, the, I'm sorry, the buyers and the watchers come to know that there is a topic called inventory, or an inventory or an auction topic, for example. Okay? And, and then the bidder is going to subscribe to the auction topic, as well as the watcher is going to subscribe to the topic. But the differences are, if, we, if I were to rewind, rewind for 30 seconds a little bit, the publisher of the information is going to say that here is the information I want to publish. In this case, the inventory data, as well as uh, the bidding data, is what is going to publish in real time. And the publisher is also going to say, the subscribers subscribing to this topic can query me for real time inventory status, can query me for details of a particular product. These are the queries it can support, for example. And the publisher is also going to say that I'm going to entertain actions such as a bid request from an author authorization group called Bidder and nothing else. In other words, the publisher determines the attributes it wants to publish, the queries it can support, and the actions the subscribers can take by participating in the topic. So what we're going to see in the subsequent slides is how we're going to accomplish this. In this case, we have, uh, the auction topic is published by a publisher where the topic name is action, uh, auction and the vendor name is ABS company. And the queries he's going to entertain are get inventory items and get current bids. And the action he's going to entertain is bid on a particular item. This is a, this is a code sample on how the proposal goes. Please notice you can see the name, the, com the vendor name, the APIs and the actions that uh, the, the publisher is, uh, is specifying. In the SDK that we provide, uh, we, have, we have done a DevNet session yesterday. We, we have given some sample scripts on how to, how to run these scripts and create a new topic dynamically on a PX grid network. So this is just running through how, this, how the topic gets created. Programmatically, you're specifying the topic name, the, the APIs and the actions you intend to take. And once uh, the topic programmatically gets uh, uh, pushed by the publisher, the topic becomes available for approval. Please notice there is a total pending approval uh, status. The, top, the topic be becomes available on ICE policy administration note for an approval status. Administrator selects it and approves, ap approves the topic. And the topic becomes available for the entire PX grid network to be, and, and, and it is discovered, discovered by the subscribers participating on PX grid. So, what, as part of Dynamics Topic feature, what the ICE uh, backend system does when a topic gets approved, it creates authorizations around the topic actions. So, on a given topic, you can publish, you can subscribe, you can query, you can take actions. So what the PX grid system does, it creates an auction publish authorization group. If an administrator selects a particular client and says that he's part of this particular authorization group, that particular client can publish on the topic. Likewise, if he puts the client on an auction subscribe to, you know, authorization group, he can subscribe to the topic, likewise for action. Please notice if these clients are not part of these authorization group, they cannot take those particular actions. They have to be part of those authorization groups. That's what he, a client called SDK01, the administrator goes, selects it and says he's, go, he's going to be a publisher. He's going to be an auction publish authorization group participant. So we talked about it, how uh, it is handled. D these are the code samples. You'll see it in your SDK. Let, let me skip through and talk about uh, in this, we, as you saw in the previous slides, SDK01 is part of 
publish authorization group he's an and he requested specifically to the px grid that he wants to be a publisher and he becomes a publisher because he's part of the authorization group similarly for subscriber a subscriber can take uh, because he's part of uh, a sub subscriber authorization group he can invoke a query called get inventory query that the publisher is entertaining if the subscriber is not part of you uh, know uh, uh, bid on items action authorization group a request made when it tries to invoke that particular action you get an error called not authorized because it's not part of that particular authorization group So these are the screenshots that talk about how to subscribe uh, to, to that particular topic that is dynamically created. We, talk, we talked about the info blocks thing. Info block is a DHCP server and IP address management system. And whenever there is a DHCP request that goes in, there is an opportunity for info blocks to do some endpoint behavior analysis. In the process, it can detect bad hosts that are running in the network, and it can propose InfoBlocks DHCP topic as a publisher. It goes through the approval process. It becomes available on PX Grid network. So like, like we talked, it goes through the approval process, and it's enabled. And, and uh, authorization groups around the like publish subscribe and auction authorization groups are created for the topic that is just now created an info blocks publisher is part of the publish authorization group and it publishes the bunch of ipam attributes ip address management attributes that it allocates as part of issuing the dhcp request Similarly, the client groups are assigned. The objective here is the bad host information is a topic published by InfoBlocks and a Qualys vulnerability assessment system subscribe to those topics, to that particular topic as a subscriber. And it can perform in a vulnerability scan and submit back the results back to InfoBlocks. And in case of real bad hosts that are detected to be vulnerable as part of the vulnerability scan, it can participate in the ANC topic and take a quarantine action. How do you achieve all this without ICE being in picture, where party X is talking to party Y directly with the topic creation? Is the feature that we introduced as part of ICE 2.0 and beyond. Yeah. So. So basically what we have seen here today is um, we started off with PX Grid. We had partners that came onto the grid and they were able to subscribe and take, take action based on what's learned from ICE. But we also saw customers asking us, hey, this is cool. It, it would be cool if another partner can also publish to the grid and, another, and yet another partner take action based on that because uh, you can now correlate information from ICE, you can correlate information from another vendor, and yet another partner can take a decision based on the integration. So that was the intent of us creating PXGrid 2, 2.0 with these dynamic topics, so that we can see an evaluation, uh, sorry, an evolution of such integrations. So again, um, if you folks want to learn more about PXGrid, go to www.cisco.com slash go slash PXGrid. Slash go slash PXGrid will get you to the use cases are available. There's a link which will take you to the DevNet page where you can download the binaries, you can get the tutorials. Uh, if you have a, a product in your, in your environment that is not in my ecosystem, contact your sales representative and they will reach out and we can try to work with your vendor to be part of that ecosystem. So with that, I want to thank you folks for spending your time this afternoon. And uh, thanks for being valuable Cisco partners and customers. Let, nice let, let us know if you have any questions, please, here. Yeah.